If you can remember, last time I was just trying to discuss the different types of neurons, where I discussed about the multipolar neurons, and I think it is the multi multipolar neurons that we did not dis I did not discuss the types of these uh, neurons. So the multipolar kind of neurons, which I've already stated that uh, they can be found in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. This kind of multipolar neurons, there are of three varieties. Among them, there are what is what 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 are called starless cells because they are star-like. Star-like. If you look at star, like this, you know, it is something like that. So it has you know is polygonal with a lot of processes like that. So we have stellate type of multipolar neuron. We have pyramidal kind of cells, which I, I give an example is pyramidal in shape. Then we have Purkinje pivots, Purkinje kind of neurons. This one, you know, you will see is J, but it's pronounced as Y. So it's not Purkinje, it's Purkinje fibers. Are you clear? So we have Purkinje, you get my point. So we have three different varieties. The pyramidal have already stated that this kind of multipolar kind of cells can be found in the cerebral cortex. The Purkinje are mostly found in the cerebellar cortex. Are you clear? So we have seen that, and the stellate can also be found in any of this, you, any of this uh, brain, uh, brain part, either cerebral hemisphere or in the cerebellar hemisphere. So now we've seen different types of the multipolar neurons. The other ones is the different types of axons. So as I said before, axons are nothing but continuation of the cytoplasm of the cell body of a neuron. So it's just like a long process of, of a neuron. The short processes are what we call the dendrites. So the axons are further divide, are divided into two major parts, what you call myelinated axon or unmyelinated axons. That is why I said uh, the previous diagram shouldn't be uh, cleaned. You know, if this is an axon, with these terminal buttons like this, and this is the cell body, something like that, and this is the nucleus, and these are the dendrites. So I, I made mention of the myelinases before in a myelinated kind of neuron. So the myelinated kind of neuron, it means they have certain layer around the axon. So the axon has a layer that consists of protein and fat. So these two components, they form this, what you call myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is just like your sweater that you used to wear during cold weather, like this one I'm wearing. The essence or purpose of wearing a sweater during cold weather or during, during winter is for you to protect yourself from the cold in the environment, right? Similarly, the myelin sheath is responsible for protecting the axon itself. So it is a protective kind of, you know, material enclosing the axon. Apart from protection it gives, it also insulates, it's an insulator. And its major function is to allow the electrical impulse to transmit quickly. You get my point? So it enhances the passage or transmission of the electrical impulses along the axon to make it quicker than it is. Uh, it is. So it's like a myelinated kind of axons or neurons. It means electrical impulses they don't pass as quick as in the myelinated kind of neurons. So the unmyelinated, that means they don't have this myelin sheath. 
the myelinated, the myelinated kind of axons can be with or without neurilemma. This neurilemma is the outermost layer of the myelin sheath. For example, now, the myelin sheath is formed by the wrapping around. It's just like if I take this marker and I use this to wrap, I use this handkerchief to wrap the marker. If I assume that this is an axon, I wrap it and I wrap, I wrap, I wrap, I wrap, I wrap until I wrap the whole of this. So assuming that this is just an axon wrapped by this handkerchief. So assume that this handkerchief is to be the cell, this one shell, cell. That's what we call Schwann cell. Schwann. Schwann cells. So this Schwann cell, it wraps around the axon of this myelinated kind of neurons. So if it wraps around it, it will form multiple covers or wrapping around that axon. So the outermost layer of that Schwann cell it's what we refer to as the Nuri Lemma. And so this Nuri Lemma, the malignant kind of neuron may be with or without that. So it means that the malignant kind of neuron may have only the protein and fat without the wrapping around by the Schwann cell. Or it may be with it. That means there is fat and protein together with the Schwann cell around, wrapping around the axon. Are you clear? Good. So that is for the myelinated kind of neuron. This kind of myelinated kind of neurons with neural lemma are found in our nerves. All these are peripheral nerves, like the spinal nerves. All these are spinal nerves, median nerve, ulnar nerve, whatever kind of nerve that supplies our muscles. So it is this, this spinal nerves, they are myelinated with Nuri lemma. The kind of nerve fibers or axons that are myelinated, but without that one cells, these kind of axons are found within the white matter of the cerebral hemisphere and the white matter of the spinal cord and that of the cerebellar hemispheres. Are you clear? So there, the axons are myelinated but without Nuri lemma. While our nerves, peripheral nerves, they are myelinated with Nuri lemma. Are you clear? Good. So the unmyelinated kind of neurons, that means they don't have the myelin sheath and they don't have the Schwann cells around them. Are you clear? Good. So that means, and even these amyloid nerve fibers, uh, neurons, they can be with neurilemma or without neurilemma. Here, if you can remember, we said the myelinated kind of neurons with neurilemma, they have the Schwann cell around them. But here, the unmyelinated neurons are mostly found in the central nervous system from inside, and the cells that surround these axons within the uh, white matter of the cerebral, cerebral hemisphere or the cerebellar hemisphere is what we call oligodendrogliocytes. We call them what? Oligodendro then then draw gliocytes. So they now wrap around the axons of the axons of those neurons within the central nervous system. And there are those without this neural lemma, that means the processes of the neurons in the cortex. You get my point because we have already talked about the cerebellar cortex and the cerebral cortex. And those ones, they are kind of neurons with their own processes there without neurilemma. And so those processes, they can also come inside the white matter, but then without being surrounded 
by the oligodendro gliosides so they are amalinated and again without nurilama are you clear so they are not surrounded so they are surrounded sorry if they are in the white matter surrounded by oligodendro gliosides so they are amalinated with nurilama but if they are within the cortex is a cerebellar or cerebral cortex they are unmarinated and because they are not surrounded by the oligodendroglyphs, so they are not they are not malinated and they are without norilama. Are you clear? Good. So we have now seen this is just like a leftover of what I didn't discuss in the last lecture. So now I have finished with the basic introduction to the neuroanatomy. Another introduction that I'm going to go into is the introduction to the cerebral hemisphere and then from the next lecture i'm going to continue with the actual discussion of the main neuroanatomy it means that we are just doing some introductions so probably maybe by next week we will delve into the actual neuroanatomy or the neuroanatomy proper all these are introductions that i have been doing with you guys so if you can remember vividly, I made mention that the central nervous system is divided into uh, brain, brainstem, and spinal cord. So, and even the brain, I said that it has been divided into larger brain and smaller brain. So now I'm going to take the larger brain, finish with it. And so if we now take the larger brain, that is the two cerebral hemispheres. You know, I already said that we have two cerebral hemispheres, one on the left side and the other one on the right side. And these two cere cerebral hemispheres on either side, you know, they are being linked together by bundles of axons. And this is what we call corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. And this kind of connection, they are what? They are commercial fibers. Are you clear? We already, I already said that this connection is a commercial connecting left and the right cerebral hemispheres. This is not the only place where we have commercial. There are other places when we continue with our discussion where you are going to see these commercial fibers. The essence of these connections, either by association fibers or by commercial fibers or by projection fibers, is linking one area with another. These commercial fibers is linking identical areas of the cerebral hemispheres. That means if this is one neuron in this left cerebral hemisphere and this is right cerebral hemisphere, so this is neuron A in this cerebral hemisphere and so it is going to link with another neuron A in this cerebral hemisphere. So that means this axons or this connection commercial uh, fibers, they link identical areas of one cerebral hemisphere with another area similar to that in the other cerebral hemisphere. Unlike the association fibers, they link non-identical areas. That means from area A, one axon can link with another axon in the area B, area C, or area D, something like that. And that is association. Projecting fibers, just like our corona radiator, that we discussed yesterday. As they project down, those ones, they even go beyond linking one area with another. They go linking one central nervous system part with another part of the central nervous system because those fibers, they descend from the cerebral cortex, they descend down, and they go into the spinal cord. And even the brainstem, you get my point? So they descend and then they connect virtually all other portion of the central nervous system. Are you clear? And so that is the, the reason for the connection. So when we now take this 
cerebral hemisphere. We take one. There are some characteristics. Each of this cerebral hemisphere is encased, or the two of them, they are encased within the cranium, which I have already made mention before. And this cranium is like a cavity, you know, in the skull. And this cranium, if you have a look from inside, you are going to see that it has been divided into, into three parts, you know. There is what we call anterior cranial fossa. There is middle cranial fossa. And then there is posterior cranial fossa. Are you clear? So this fossa, they are just cavities, shallow deferations. And in the middle here, there is one large foramen that we call, uh, well, it is just around the posterior, not virtually in the middle, it's just around between the middle and the posterior. There we have the uh, foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is through which the, uh, the brainstem, part of the, the, the lower border of the brainstem is in relation to that foramen magnum. So now the spinal cord begins from the lower border of the foramen magnum, and then it is sent down into the vertebral canal. You get my point. So now this cerebral hemispheres, they now lie comfortably on the floor of this three cranial fossae. So all these lobes that I'm going to discuss now, either of them is related to this cranial fossa. Are you clear? So each of the cerebral hemisphere has what we call four lobes. That's what we call frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital, and temporal lobe. It also has three surfaces. Apart from having four lobes, it has three surfaces. These surfaces is just like, um, I don't know, I don't have something triangular for me to be able to show you. But if I draw it like this, if I draw something like this, that means if I cut a cross section of this cerebral hemisphere, and then I look at it from this side, one of it, this is what I'm going to see. So that means there is one surface. If this is another cerebral, cerebral hemisphere that I cut, you get my point? So I have one right, one left, each of, each of them facing each other. And so it means that this area where this one faces this one, since this is the midline here, are you clear on the sagittal, mid-sagittal plane? So this is the medial surface. So that means cerebral hemisphere has a medial surface, and this is lying inferiorly because it's lying in relation to this cranial fossae. So it has inferior surface. This is medial. And then this side is supposed to be lateral surface. But in most of your textbook, this surface is called the prolateral surface. Why? The reason because it slopes from above downward. That is why it is called supralateral surface. But it's not bad if you call it lateral surface. But because it slopes from above down, that is why it is called a supralateral surface. So that means we have now seen our three surfaces. It has three poles. If you look at this diagram, you are going to see that anteriorly, this frontal lobe projects. And so the most anterior part of it here, because this is, if I draw the paste like this, this is the nose and this is the mouse, and so something like that, this, this is where the eyes would be. And that would be the base like that. So uh, something like this. So it's like this area is anterior pole, or rather frontal pole. So you can call it anterior pole or frontal pole. 
Are you clear? Similarly, this aspect of the temporal law, the most anterior aspect of it is called temporal pole. Temporal what? Temporal pole. That means we have one anterior pole here, supra anterior and infra anterior pole. So the supra anterior one is with regard to the frontal lobe, and the infra anterior pole is with regard to the temporal pole. And posteriorly here on the occipital lobe, we have the most posterior convex area there is the occipital pole O, the posterior pole. So this one is also called occipital O posterior pole. Are you clear? So we have now seen our three poles. Now, what are the borders? If you look at this diagram, the coronal section, because if, 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 if I cut like this, and I look at it from this, this is coronal section. Are you clear? And then I look at this this way. That is exactly what I did here, because this is the face. So I cut across like this. And so it means that we have this border here, and then we have this border here, and then we have this, we have one border here going there, and then we have this border going there, and then we have this border going there. Are you clear? Those of you that did technical drawing, I did TD in my secondary school, so I have no problem with, you know, three-dimensional figures or what have you. So now on this side, on the medial side, since this is the inferior surface, so this border is called inferior medial surface. It makes sense, right? This is the medial surface, and this is the inferior surface. And this border here is called inferior medial surface. Just like if I do a demonstration with this, if this is just like the cut end of the cerebral hemisphere, are you clear? This is the cut end of the cerebral hemisphere. This is the superior lateral surface. This is the medial surface. Are you clear? And then this is the, this, this, this is the superior lateral surface. This is the medial surface. And here the flow is the inferior surface. Are you clear? So the border here, is called superior border, this border here. And this border here is called what? Inferior lateral border because there's another one here. If I turn it this way, you will see this border here. And so this is what? Thank you very much. So you have inferior medial border, you have inferior lateral border, and then you have? So we have three borders. But in some textbooks, they may likely tell you that there are about uh, four borders and that one is with regard to the um you know the the orbital and the tentorial surface of the uh of the of the of the cerebral hemispheres